Today's wholesome Halloween episode is about loneliness and isolation and specifically that which comes with not being able to leave your own home because of a deadly virus outside. alive, which I'm going to henceforth exclusively refer to as alive for the duration of this video because every time I pronounce the word hashtag out loud I feel like a cop, is a Korean horror zombie movie released on Netflix as recently as this year. Alive follows the story of Jun Woo, a video game live streamer who wakes up one morning to a note from his family saying they're out for the day and that he should grab groceries as they don't have much food in. Expecting another normal day, Jun Woo starts up a video game when his friends tell him to turn on the news which tells of crowds of people attacking each other all across the city, then screaming outside. And going to his apartment window, Jun Woo sees just how bad things have gotten. Trapped inside with not much food to live on, Jun Woo has to try and keep surviving until help can come, if it comes at all. And all while dealing with the isolating loneliness of being cut off from his friends and family and avoiding any potential bitey home invaders. Alive is an intense, grippingly delivered tale with an excellently grounded and natural performance from its lead UR that wastes no time at all getting to the meat of what it's all about. Where other zombie films often succeed on the slow building dread as the virus grows and takes more victims, Alive takes exactly 1 minute and 20 seconds before you see complete and utter chaos. One minute and 20 seconds exactly. That is how long it takes for this movie to go from, ah, oh, this is a nice lazy Sunday, I'm just gonna wake up and stream some games on Twitch to, oh my fucking God, the world is ending. The opening is so effective, they literally just used it as the trailer. Like, I'm not even joking. If you go on YouTube right now and search for the trailer for this film, the official Netflix channel just put out the first five minutes of the movie, completely unedited from its original state, and just labelled it trailer. Like, they know they don't need to do anything else. If this grab you by the throat opening isn't going to make you want to watch it to see what the hell happens next, then no trailer they could put together could possibly do anything more to convince you. It is such an effective opening that I wish I could praise this aspect of the film without telling you anything about it because it is so breakneck and relentless in its speed to getting you to that point that even when you go in knowing it's a zombie movie, it's still shocking simply because you don't expect it to get quite that bad quite that fast. This film starts where other zombie movies end and I am shocked I haven't seen this done before. Like I know there's plenty of films start in the middle of a zombie apocalypse but they don't have that tonal shift of normality and quiet before to juxtapose with the chaos. Closest thing I can think is maybe 28 days later where the protagonist just kind of gets thrust into things after waking up from a coma and finding London empty when he wakes but even that spends a decent amount of time on him confusingly trying to get his bearings. No knock to 28 Days Later by the way, I love that film and that is also a fantastic opener. I'm just saying that even the closest thing I could possibly equate this opening to, at least that I've seen, still isn't really the same thing. And it's not just the opening that keeps this level of tension. There are scenes in this film that I will not spoil that are absolutely nail biting. With a minimalistic script, intensely aggressive zombies. Look at the way they slide this girl across the floor, man. Ugh. Alive crafts a bleak, oppressive atmosphere. One that's unfortunately maybe a little uh, familiar to its viewers right now. To say that this film's topics and themes are timely and relevant right now would be a massive understatement. Had this film gone into production this year and came out in 2021 or 2022, I would honestly be rolling my eyes at how bluntly on the nose it was an allegory for the COVID-19 pandemic. Except this film went into production before any of that shit kicked off. It's not just that the film is about a deadly virus. Hell, any zombie flick has COVID parallels in that sense. It's that it specifically deals with the isolating effects of said virus, and is set almost entirely within an increasingly claustrophobic four walls, likely not too dissimilar to what we've all probably been trapped in for months at a time recently. 
Would you believe I actually watched this shit to cheer myself up? Nice fun action zombie movie, I thought. And instead I was greeted with the eerily familiar sight of pacing around a small apartment and the slow mental toll this takes on you. Awesome Halloween. Okay, for real though, why is this film in this marathon? Like, surely I can't justify this. Surely at this point in time, this is just a really depressing and miserable watch. Well, yes and no. Jun Wu's story was in some ways uncomfortable for me to watch at first, and that certainly wasn't because of any of the zombies. Their part to play in this was a welcome distraction. No, it was watching Jun Wu slowly give up that had me a little trepidatious. His quarantine had some eerie similarities to my own during Britain's first nationwide lockdown. Granted, no one was trying to literally eat my face, but like him, I was completely by myself. I live alone. Literally the only place I could go was to stay within the walls of my shoebox sized apartment. My internet was out and I was actually kind of thrust into this position within a small space of time. At the risk of oversharing, I wasn't actually in the country when the lockdown kicked off over here. I'd been visiting my girlfriend in America at the time, I'd flew over a month prior, and we actually ended up breaking up the day before I was due to fly back. And then because of Covid all my flights got cancelled and I had to live with her for another 6 weeks. Don't worry though, I'm not telling you that as any kind of like sob story or whatever, I just think the comedic timing on that shit is hilarious. And as it happens, the six weeks extra I spent with her were actually really lovely, like there was no hard feelings there, uh, she's super cool, I still consider her one of my best friends, and we're both seeing other people now, we're good, it's all cool. The reason I am mentioning this is because as a result of that sequence of events, I ended up going through a pretty life-changing moment, and then went through the extreme change of spending two and a half months in close contact with someone I loved to having to take a 25 plus hour journey home, which consisted of a three hour drive, two flights, two layovers, two tram rides, two train journeys, and a metro, then a walk, all while lugging a suitcase because that ended up being the only route that could get me back home, only to then go into an obligatory 14 days of total self-isolation you have to do after traveling from abroad here, where I couldn't even put my bins out or go for a walk and grab groceries, and I made this whole journey and had to go into this isolation, all to get to a far smaller, far colder apartment with less food, no company to quarantine with, and an internet so bad in the rare cases when it wasn't down, I couldn't even make Skype or Zoom calls all before even going into the general nationwide lockdown. And that was, I gotta tell you, not the best feeling, my dudes. And Alive very much captures a lot of these feelings that I and probably many, many, many of you have recently gone through or continue to experience. So you'd think that it wouldn't be all that helpful to watch right now, but honestly, I could really have done with this film back during the pits of despair that was earlier this year. And as I say these words, I'm nervous and scared of revisiting some of these feelings because a new local lockdown is looming for the entire northeast of Britain. Not as intense as before, sure, but still potentially just as isolating. As this one's rules say that we all still have to go to our non-essential jobs and make sure to buy things, but also says that seeing our friends and family, even if six feet apart from them in their gardens, would be illegal. The new government slogan should perhaps be, work, spend, have no friend. And yet somehow, in amongst all of this news, the film Alive has been a small comfort to me. Horror can be a great kindness sometimes. By taking you safely into the darkest moments, it can teach you where to look to find the light. This is a pretty new movie, so I don't want to spoil too much, but I will say there's a point fairly early into its runtime where the dynamic changes. As Jun Wu makes daily video diaries, the light slowly fades from his eyes until eventually it all becomes too much for him and he attempts to hang himself. But it's what saves him that's important to note. As he does this, a laser pointer from an apartment across the block flashes into his home and frantically tries to communicate with him to stop. He breaks free and goes to his window to see another survivor, a woman named Yu Bin, our secret second lead, equally excellent and grounded in her performance from Park Shin Hai. This is a small, bright encounter in what's otherwise a world of darkness, and as the two begin to signal each other daily and become closer, it's this little bit of human interaction that gives them both the motivation and drive they need to keep going. There's a really incredible little moment where Jun Wu tells Yu Bin that she saved him. She, in her apartment, gives a glance upwards to reveal a noose of her own. Though Jun Wu doesn't realise it, they were both in the same boat. They saved each other. 
As someone who didn't quite ever get to this level where I was in any immediate danger to myself but did spend my birthday on the phone to the Samaritans this year, this hit kinda hard. And I'm sure a lot of you out there can also relate. And the only reason I am telling you this and broadcasting my personal issues to the internet at large is because I want you to know that you aren't alone in those feelings. This year has been really, really, really tough for everybody and absolutely nobody would blame you if you're struggling right now. But you should know that there are people in this world who care about you and God forbid if it's getting to this level where you need to hear this, want you to stick around. Hell, I want you to stick around. And I hope this doesn't come across as insincere because I know I don't personally know you, but I swear I mean that. It sounds silly and overly sentimental, but this film reassures me that as long as we have each other and take care of one another, we're gonna be okay. I know that's hard to believe right now, but all of this is temporary. Hell, while things aren't completely hunky-dory, I can tell you now that just in myself alone, I'm nowhere close to the lows I felt when I had to call the Samaritans earlier this year. So things do get better. And part of the reason for that improved mood is, just like this film suggests, due to the people in my life. When I couldn't leave the house for food, it was my mom that came round with a big massive shop, even when I didn't ask her to. When the isolation got too much, it was calls with others who were struggling just the same as me that made me feel a little less alone in things. And when I was desperately sad at 3am on my extremely quiet birthday, it helped to have someone to talk to, even if it was just the Samaritans. And for a bit of levity, while that was an extremely shitty time in my life, it was these small solaces that got me through to the point at least where lockdown lifted a little bit to the point where anybody who was living alone could create a support bubble and go and visit one other home. And I got to see my family dogs for the first time in months. And let me tell you, that was amazing. Also, my mom and my sister were there too, and they're pretty cool, but look how happy the dogs are to see me. Anyway, to go back to the movie, I also like how the film depicts technology in a positive light. While not always reliable in the narrative in order to raise stakes, it shows how it can be used to help people and to make connections. I mean, right now, it's probably the main thing keeping half the world sane. Our ability to keep in touch with others in ways we couldn't before, even if not always perfect, is worth celebrating. I mean, granted, it's the same tech that's almost definitely going to give us a grossly sycophantic John Lewis Christmas ad this year, but you know, you gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. The point is, no matter how bad things are, we have each other. In amongst all the confusing news and scary uncertainty of right now, we have each other. We have ways to reach out. And if you need to call someone today just to feel a little bit okay, then I encourage you to do so because your friends can keep you going. The people you love can keep you going. And sometimes, weirdly, it's a horror action zombie movie that is needed to remind you of that fact. Horror is a kindness sometimes. Wow, so, uh, sorry. I didn't mean for this episode to get so heavy. Uh, I just kind of, started writing it and this is what came out and then it felt weird to delete it because it was kind of what I wanted to say and uh, basically I hope you're all doing okay and that you and your families are keeping safe and I apologize again for the subject matter today. I've put some mental health resources in the description and the only reason I'm running ads on this video is because if it does make any money I'll donate it all to the Samaritans. I don't expect it to be much. Uh, rarely any of my videos make anything, to be honest. But it's better than them not having whatever tiny amount it does. And I'll probably supplement it with my own donation. Tomorrow's episode will be lighter, I swear. <laughs> I'll see you then.